um, what I want to do is, on the count of three, I want everybody to yell at the top of your lungs, it's time for the daily bread. And then we'll finally get into it, all right? So let's make sure you've got a good, good angle on it. We good? Yep. All right, ready? Yep. One, two, three. It's time for the daily bread. That was awesome. Hi, what's up, everybody? It is Friday morning, and we are about to get kicked off with the Disruptive Innovation event here, Disrupt Tour. We're at this beautiful Pasea Hotel and Spa here in Huntington Beach. And uh, right over here, we've got the ocean right in front of us, this beautiful lawn here. And I'm gonna be kicking off the first keynote of the day, which is gonna be starting in about five, 10 minutes from now. And I'm gonna be talking about building a personal brand, talking to a huge group of financial advisors, people in the insurance and real estate agent, uh, real estate industry. And I'm super excited. The last few days have been a little rough for me, a little under the weather, but I've just gotten hydrated, just ate food for the first time in a couple of days, and I am ready to rock and roll. So hopefully you guys all got a chance to warm up a little bit of champagne, some mimosas. What I want to share with you, uh, this event, the purpose behind this event is really to emphasize the significance of what we're going through in the current era. And many of you might not recognize that we truly are living in the greatest moment of existence and we are in a huge transition when it comes to the opportunity of being able to brand and grow your business. I was speaking to Mr. Eric Fang from Singapore, international speaker. Mr. Eric Fang's gonna be here later today if you've not already seen him around. But we, we spoke about this and we are living through an era of what he refers to as equalization. And what that means is every single individual in here, no matter where you are in your business, you are gonna have so many takeaways today that's gonna help you elevate and immediately impact your opportunity at a scale that puts you at the equivalence of any large conglomerate. I wanna share with you just brief statistics if you're not already engaged that on average, people check their phones over 46 times per day. Some of you are checking your phones 46 times an hour. That's right. And you're not anti-social, you're just on social media. So if your partner, spouse, are saying you're always on your phone, you're right when you say I'm working. That's true. Four hours and five minutes is the average time spent on social media daily. Some people have that statistic up to nine hours a day. The fastest growing demographic of Facebook users right now are of the age 75 plus. So if you think that the senior market is not on Facebook, they're the fastest growing demographic on Facebook. Instagram is the most used social media platform with more than an average of 800 million monthly active users. 800 million. Just three, four years ago, that number was 400 million. So to scale at that size in such a short window of time is a significant opportunity and many people are missing the bus. I've connected with most of the practitioners that are gonna be sharing with you best practices through social media. We built a relationship through it. It all, it all starts with a DM, right? It goes down to the DM, right? <laughs> Millennials, also known as the tech generation, Where's all my millennials at? Hold on, where's all the millennials at? Let me share something with you. Do not underestimate the millennial generation. All of the so-called stereotypes that they're lazy, they're silver fed with a silver spoon, uh, they want overnight success. All these stereotypes, let me let you know if you're a millennial or not one, Millennials are 92 million strong and the largest generation to ever exist in the history of our country. And when millennials start to work together and stop hating on one another's success and start to help elevating each other, you two will grow with that group. So do not underestimate the significance of millennials. So I ask you one more time, where's all of our millennials at? That's where the millennials are at. I want to share with you, this is all referred to as disruptive innovation. You're going to learn what disruptive means. People are threatened by that term. And our keynote speaker is going to share with you how to start leveraging 
and be among those that are using it towards your advantage if you're not already. I consider this the perfect storm. We are right now living in the perfect era to connect with. And everything happens with relationships. If transactions don't take place, such as sales, nothing moves. So everyone who's in sales, specifically if you're an entrepreneur, commission earner, you have the most noble and best career you could have signed up for. And those of us that are in the commission side of the business, I respect you, I applaud you, and I recognize, and you recognize, that no one will ever pay you as much as you're willing to pay yourself. I appreciate that. So without any delay, let me just share with you how excited I am to kick this off with our first speaker and just a little bit of history of who this gentleman is, even though he's already famous. Mr. Tyler Harris is from Greenville, South Carolina. He's the national coordinator and partner of Consolidated Assurance and the president of No Hook Media. Tyler has gone all in on building his personal brand by documenting his daily life at scale. Most importantly, Tyler is a husband and father to the two loves of his life, his wife and his daughter. Tyler's also, and he'll share, with this, uh, he'll share this with you, but Tyler also learned how to leverage and scale social media to a point to where he wrote over 7,500 insurance policies in three years face to face. Now I've been in the business for 15 years. I don't think I've still written 7,500 policies and I work beyond full time. So there's a lot that I'm gonna learn today. So if we can roll the clip, a little bit of who Mr. Tyler Harris is. What up guys, it's Gary Vee and it's time for the Daily Bread. I'm a pretty even keel, kind of calm guy, but like, I'm like coming out of my skin right now. Personal responsibility, the lack of it is a cancer. But do their actions match those ambitions? The main focus is to remain focused. Every successful person has a painful story, will your painful story have a successful ending? Some will master and some will serve. Yeah. Your time. Attention to detail is probably the most important thing. I don't have any questions. I just want to tell you thank you. Like, I have an insane amount of appreciation. Are you chasing hustle or are you chasing your gift? Whatever struggle you are going through right now, it is not fatal. So just do it anyway. Like, that's the best definition, basically, what he just said of self awareness. One thing I can tell you about a sales wolf is they are efficient. To be able to operate at this level, it's. It's insanity. I hope you're hungry, cause it's time for the daily bread. You guys hungry for the daily bread? Everyone get on your feet, get on your feet if you're ready for the daily bread. Have your cell phones out, feel free to stream live. Get on your Instagram, on your Facebook. Hashtag Disruptor, give it up to Mr. Tyler Harris. Mr. Tyler Harris. All right, we're good. How's everybody doing this morning? I am not a rapper. And I don't play one on a TV show, even though you just saw one. And I got to say, this is the most awesome thing ever to walk up with Pedialyte. But I'm struggling a little bit today, so if you'll bear with me, I'm trying to hydrate. It's been a long 48 hours for me. But man, I'm so excited to be here. So excited to be here. I've been looking forward to this uh, for months now. And, and, I'm, and I want to tell you guys, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time out of your schedules, that you spent money to come to this event to learn about building a brand, to learn about how to market like the year that we live in. It's, it's so important. But I'm so glad that you're here and that we can all share this together. What I want to do before we get started is I want to have TJ come up on stage for a second. And I want you guys to participate with me because, number one, you'll get to be on the vlog on Monday. And number two, it's just gonna be the best content ever. So if you wanna come up with a camera, which would be even better. <laughs> um, what I wanna do is on the count of three, I want everybody to yell at the top of your lungs, it's time for the daily bread. <laughs> and then we'll finally get into it, all right? So let's make sure you've got a good, good angle on it. We good? Yep. All right, ready? Yep. One, two, three. It's time for the daily bread. That was awesome. Thank you, TJ. All right, guys, so I want to jump right into this. Again, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so humbled to be here. 
And my journey has been a short one, but it's been a lot of stuff packed in uh, to a short amount of time to get here. And so I'm going to be talking today about growing a personal brand. And just by show of hands, how many people here are currently building a personal brand? Everyone should definitely raise their hand because we're all building a personal brand. It's just whether you realize it or not, or whether you're being intentional about it or not, whether you're just allowing it to be built or where you are building it, whether you're being disrupted or you're being the disruptor or disrupting on a daily basis. But to give you a little bit of context to kind of frame this for you guys and tell you a little bit about me, I think it was Jim Rohn that said, I don't say this to impress you, but to impress upon you. It's just the importance of kind of listening to what I have to say today, because I do know a little bit uh, about what I'm talking about. There's nothing special about me. I just do a lot of stuff. Um, and that compounded over time has created results. But just to give you a little bit of an idea of kind of what I've done over the last few years, who the heck is Tyler Harris? Because a lot of you are probably just asked yourself that exact question. Who the heck is Tyler Harris? So in 2014, I was broke. And I mean broke, broke, like no money. Uh, I was in debt, a lot of debt. Uh, I was depressed. I was out of shape. Um, you name it, I was pretty much winning at every level. Like <laughs> it was just the worst. Like I, I was in a bad place. I'd gone through a really, really bad divorce. I'd gone through a really bad termination uh, from a job, which led to sales job after sales job after sales job of not being able to find anything that I was passionate about, not being able to find anything that I could go all in on again for fear that it would be taken away from me. And I was just in a bad place. And I had one of those cliche moments, one of those look yourself in the mirror, and I, it sounds even more cliche to say that I was actually looking myself in the mirror, uh, but one of those moments where I just took ownership of it and said, you know what? Everything that's happened to me, everything that I've done, all this stuff, I'm exactly where I am right now because of me. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. And the encouragement from that was I knew that if I got myself into the situation that I was in currently, then I could get myself out of it. And that's my biggest encouragement to anyone is that you got yourself to where you are. Whether that's a great thing or whether that's a bad thing, you got yourself there. And you can get yourself out of it or you can get yourself to the next level. So what happened when I took that ownership and, and the phrase I like to use is I waged war on personal change. I didn't just kind of start making a change. I waged war on personal development and growth. And I got involved in the insurance business. How many people here are in the insurance business? Ra raise your hands. Awesome. That's, that's awesome. Most people here, you guys are so smart. So what happened that next year? Well, the next year I earned 300,000, a little over $300,000 in commission selling life insurance from being dead broke. I had to borrow the money to get started in the business to begin with. 2016, earned over 450,000. 2017, earned over 650,000. This is all from personal commissions selling life insurance. And it's so funny as I say that and know that my topic is talking about building a personal brand. We all have this kind of who am I complex. Like, who am I to have a grown man a grown man with a camera following me around 24-7 and put out a vlog every day as though people care. Who am I? And people say, well, I, I just don't think I'm interesting enough. And we, were, we did a podcast festival. Yes, those actually exist. It was a podcast festival. It was out in Utah a couple weeks ago. And we were out there and somebody asked, they're like, well, what if you, don't, what if you just don't do anything really interesting? And my answer was, I sell life insurance. <laughs> like, there's nothing interesting about selling life insurance. There's nothing. But we all have interesting things about our lives. We all have just this framework that we've built around us that will provide value to someone. And I've become increasingly, increasingly, it may be a little weird about this, but I think about the fact that there is somebody, there is somebody in Kansas right now that's scrolling on their phone, that's sitting at their computer, and they are literally sitting there waiting, waiting to hear the message that only I can deliver to them. And it's not because my message is special. It's just because for whatever reason, based on my context, with my lens, and the way that I put it out there, and the way that they're able to receive it, it's the only way that they're gonna receive that message and actually implement those changes. So Gary Vaynerchuk could get up and say something. Tony Robbins could get up and say something. All the greatest speakers of all time, they could say something, but that's not going to reach that person. I'm going to reach that person. And it's my responsibility to try to do so. And that's why I build a personal brand. But what was the biggest mistake that I made during that period of time? The biggest mistake I made 
during this period of growth in my life was not documenting it, was not documenting. The fact that I don't have a video of me when I was dead broke and depressed and in the darkest time of my life kills me to this day that I don't have that documented because of how powerful that story would be right now. And that I didn't document 2015, that I didn't document 2016, as I went through a radical transformation in every way, I didn't document it. But what I knew at that point was the second biggest mistake that I could make would be not doing it there forward. And so in 2017, I started document, documenting my life on social media. It was January 11th, 2017. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I did my first post on Facebook, Instagram, 90 seconds went by, my phone vibrated, and it was my wife calling. And she was mortified, like mortified. She was like, what was that? <laughs> and, and it had to do with some of this change. It had to do with going from where I was to where I was at that point. And she was not, not excited about it, at, <laughs> to say the least. She was actually kind of pissed off, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> and she just didn't want our friends to see it. What are our friends going to think? What are family going to think? And they see all this stuff. And I told her, babe, give me six months, six months. I think I have an idea of what I'm going to try to do here. You may want to unfriend me or unfollow me or, or even block me because it's going to be everywhere. But just give me six months to show you what I think I know what I'm doing. And so over the next few months, and it really only took about three or four months, as I would get messages from people that were like, life-changing stuff, like things that would catch you off guard, like, whoa, wait a second, like, this changed this person in that way? Like, I didn't even realize I was talking about that type of stuff. Like, a guy messaging me saying, like, hey, four months ago, you talked about how you prep all your meals on Sunday for when you go out and sell all week. And I started doing that as soon as I saw you do that, and I'm off insulin now. I'm like, what? I'm like, I don't even talk about health and fitness stuff. He just happened to see me in the vlog, or happened to see me in, a, in an Instagram live just prepping my meals for the week. And when these things started happening, I would take a screenshot and I would text them to my wife. And I would take a screenshot and I'd save them and I'd show my wife on the weekends. And they'd say, hey, look at, this, look at this message. See this? And very quickly, she started to understand what I was doing. And she started getting behind what I was doing and, and understand that there was a purpose for all this craziness. Because it is crazy. It is crazy. So I started on January 11th of 2017. To give you an idea, guys, when you're building a personal brand... I'm going to give you some tips today. I'm going to give you some pointers. They're going to be simple, but they're not easy. And I think we can all agree that that's pretty much like everything in life. Simple, you know the things you're supposed to do, but it's not easy to do them. 3,166 posts on Facebook since January 11, 2017. It's actually more than that because I wrote this a couple days ago. But that's just on Facebook. That's not to mention the Instagram. That's not mentioning all the other platforms. That's not mentioning the way more Instagram stories now, because that's what everybody's looking at right now is Instagram stories. It's crazy amounts of those a day. But 1,125 videos, 2,041 photos in less than 18 months. I did over 700, it was like 725 videos the first year on Facebook. It's like over six a day. Started a podcast that year, 2017, called the Sales Rules Podcast. And my business partner and I sat in a room talking about sales type stuff, but quickly evolved into talking about everything because we just believe that everyone's in sales. Like whether you believe it or not, you're in sales. You're either selling yourself to do something every day, or you're selling yourself to someone every day, or you're actually selling a physical product. But we're all in sales. Started the Sales Rules Podcast. And then this coming, this past January, uh, started the Daily Bread vlog, brought TJ on board, and he travels with me 24-7, and we do this five days a week on a 24-hour turnaround. The Breadwinner podcast, you'll start to notice a reoccurring theme of bread puns. It's pretty much what I'm all about. I, and the funny thing is I don't eat carbs, and it's like the worst, like, constant reminder. Um, <laughs> the Breadwinner podcast uh, is a, one that we started in January as well. It's more of an interview style. Uh, podcast, which by the way, yesterday we interviewed uh, Christopher Drama uh, Path um, out in uh, Beverly Hills, and it was incredible. And the funny thing about that, the Breadwinner podcast, and just about a podcast in general, like if you don't have one, you should start one for the, if this is the only reason, an excuse to talk to somebody, an excuse to talk to somebody cool, excuse to talk to somebody that's done stuff that you haven't done. Like for me to 
reach out to drama and be like, yo, drama, I want to sit down with you and chat. He'd be like, no thanks. But if I'm like, hey, I want to sit down and chat on my podcast. It's called the Breadwinner Podcast. Here's the other people we've had. Do you want to sit down? Yeah, sure. When can you come out? Yeah, let's do it. It's just an excuse to talk to people that are doing things I want to do. It's an excuse to talk to people that have succeeded in some level of life or are doing interesting things. It's the only reason I do it. The funny thing is I don't check the analytics on any of this stuff. None of it. I don't look at the analytics on any of the podcasts. I have no idea how many people have watched the vlog, the podcast, the sales of podcast. Like, no idea. It's just a reason to talk to people. The daily bread flavor in your ear. Unbelievable. Uh, that's the audio version of the Daily Bread blog. And then I have another brand called Motivation Kings. It's got like 950-something thousand likes on Facebook and a bunch of stuff on Instagram. It's just like your generic motivational meme garbage that everybody loves. <laughs> but people do get something out of it, so we, we, we did that. But this is all since 2017. And so as we start talking about building a personal brand, a couple of things I want to lay out before we get started. Number one, personal branding weaves together your life and your work in the form of sharing your life's work. That's really it. You're just sharing. I don't care who watches. I don't care if nobody watches. Quite frankly, I do it for me. That may be selfish, but it's the truth. It's a digital footprint in the sands of time and space, crowdsourced by friends, colleagues, and clients. So the question, and most everybody raised their hand. If they didn't, they did after I said raise your hand. <laughs> the question is no longer if you have a personal brand, but if you choose to guide and cultivate that brand or let it be defined on your behalf. And really, that to me is the definition of this conference altogether. Disrupt or be disrupted. Are you going to let others create your personal brand, or are you going to create your personal brand? That's the question. I promise you, I will never be disrupted. I will never be disrupted. And the only ones that will be disrupted are those that are not actively pursuing building a personal brand on a daily basis. So how do you build a successful personal brand? That's the cheesiest sock photo I could find followed by the cheesiest title ever. You have to get all A's. <laughs> you already are. You already are building a personal brand. Add value. Authenticity. Get active and write your autobiography. Got to get all A's. So let's start with the first. You already are. Congratulations. Congratulations. We're all building a personal brand. Your personal brand is just your reputation. I don't know why, but some people, they think too much. They, they, they think things are way too complicated. Like they think this is um, Elon Musk and we're sending rocket ships into outer space. It's just your reputation. It's just what people say about you when you're not around, what people think of when they hear your name. What do they associate when they hear Tyler Harris? That's my personal brand. Another way to look at it is, is there a certain subject matter in which you want to be perceived as an expert? Or are there just general qualities that you want to have linked to your brand? So what's an example of that? Do you want to be the expert of selling real estate to first-time home buyers in Huntington Beach? Or do you just want to be known for the guy or girl that just works their face off, that just hustles like no other to provide value for their clients? You get to choose. That's the cool thing about this. Like You get to choose. It's your brand. You get to choose. But that comes back to that disrupt or be disrupted. If you don't choose and if you're not purposeful about it, it will get chosen for you. And then you'll have to live with that. So you want to be the one doing the disrupting. It's giving your business a face and a name. Sina mentioned it earlier. This fragile period of time, the next three to five years, does represent the largest land grab that there will ever be on social media that there will ever be on the internet. And the market's been great for years now. The economy's doing great. But that's not going to last forever. And I promise you, the ones that are going to do well when the market tanks, when the market starts to go south, are the ones that have built a personal brand, and they're the ones that you know. Like, I have a relationship 
with that guy, with that girl. I'm going to still do business with them when the market goes down because I know them. I trust them. I know what they ate last night. I know what they did last weekend with their daughter. Like, like you know these people. You're giving it a face and a name. Like, I, I, can't, I can't stress how important that is to know now because it's easy to get sidetracked when the market has been so good. Like, anybody can go out there and be in sales right now and make money. Like, that's easy. I became a financial advisor and got fully licensed in October of 2007. For those of you that remember that time, <laughs> it's pretty much like the peak of the market right before everything just fell out. And I remember all these other financial advisors in the firm that I was with, they, they looked at it and they were like, oh no, how are we, we going to ever survive? And I just remember it, and I don't know if this was something that was just in me. I don't remember anybody telling me this. I just remember feeling and knowing that this was the greatest time ever to build a book of business. Why? Well, because the majority of financial advisors, what were they doing at that time? They were hiding underneath their desks, not answering their phones, because the market was going crazy, their clients were calling, they were all upset. And what was I doing? I was out there <laughs> knocking on their clients' doors and saying, hey, I'm Tyler Harris, financial advisor right down the road, just out doing some good old-fashioned advertising. And I would build a relationship with these people that were scared to death. They were scared to death. And they were looking for answers. And I can remember, I used to, second, third time I'd talk to them, I would get their statements and see all the different investments that they had. And I would start calling them. And I would start saying things like, well, Mrs. Smith, I'm sure your financial advisor's already called you about this this morning, but just so you know, and I would just look up some random news article about a random stock or mutual fund or position that they had in their portfolio. And I would tell them about it. You know, that Apple stock that you had looks like such and such happened. And you may want to think about this, but again, I'm sure your financial advisor's already told you about this. I would call a week and a half later. Mrs. Smith, I'm sure your financial advisor's already called you this morning. Just wanted to let you know that that uh, Johnson & Johnson stock, you know, this just happened with their, the board meeting, and this could be the potential ramifications of that. But again, I'm sure your financial advisor's already told you about this. And about the fourth or fifth time, they would say, no, my freaking financial advisor has not told me any of this, and you're giving me all the advice from my portfolio. And they would roll over their accounts to me. And it was the greatest time ever to roll over accounts because everyone else was out there doing what? Nothing. And it was being proactive and putting a face to the name and actually picking up the phone and actually showing up at their house. It's no different with building a personal brand. The second is add value. How many of you guys are familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk? I'm a huge Gary Vaynerchuk fan. Um, the majority of the stuff that I do is literally just following the blueprint that he's laid out step by step. So I don't claim that I've created or invented any of this stuff. I just follow what he says to do and just do it every single day. But this is probably the most important, which is add value. It's about disproportionate value. Who can add the most? In every situation, in every networking event that you're in like today, in every one-on-one -on -one conversation that you're in on a daily basis, every time you're engaging with someone's content in the comments and creating a dialogue there, it has to be, you have to constantly be thinking, how can I provide more value to them than they can provide to me? The secret sauce in that is doing it without any expectation of anything return. Doing it just because it's the right thing to do. See, there's going to be people that come up today and they're going to talk about monetizing your personal brand, and that's extremely important. I, my personal belief is I excel in my career at a high level so that I can build my personal brand. I don't build my personal brand so that I can exceed in my career in a high level. But it does that. Does that make sense? So I excel in my career so that I can build my personal brand. I don't build my personal brand so that I can excel in my career, but it does that for me, right? And that's about giving value, giving value, giving value every single day and not ever expecting someone to return that to you, but just doing it because you know it's what you should do, because it's the right thing to do. Any of you guys have read Gary's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook? Anybody? Okay, everybody need, needs to read that book. Uh, it's crucial that you read that book, because it's exactly what I'm talking about. Jab, Jab, Jab means 
provide value, provide value, provide value. And then the right hook is when you ask. It's when you ask for something. It's when you try to close a sale. You guys will see in this bottom right hand corner, No Hook Media, which is a media company I started. We took that basically to another level. and We said, we don't want to ever have to ask. I don't want to ever have to ask somebody to buy something. I want them to ask me because I want to have provided so much disproportionate value over such a long period of time that people feel indebted to me. And that sounds weird, but it's just true. Like that's the best form of sales ever. Like with Gary, for example, the man puts out the most god awfully ugly shoes on the planet. And I'm a shoe guy. And I just, they're so ugly. They really are, they really are, they're the ugliest shoes. But I, right now, I have guilt in my heart because I have not bought a pair, knowing that I'll never wear them because they're so ugly. But I have guilt in my heart for not having bought them, and I'll probably end up buying some. But it's because he's provided me so much value. I bought 750 of his last book, the Ask Gary V book, before he came out with Crushing, I bought 750 of them. We gave out 300 of them in the streets of New York just because that book changed my life. So that's what it's all about, disproportionate value. He's been talking about this a lot lately, and it's something that I've really, really started taking seriously, and that is whoever can hold their breath the longest, that's who wins. And so from day one, when I started building this personal brand and I started putting myself out there and documenting my life on social media, I said from day one that I wasn't going to monetize any of it for five years, that you would never see a, you know, join my mastery group or buy my ebook or uh, let me plug you into this funnel and buy this, buy that wasn't going to do it for five years. And five years was really just an arbitrary number that I came up with on Facebook Live at one o'clock in the morning one night. Um, but whoever can hold their breath the longest, like lately I've been thinking like, what if I never monetize it? Because think about it. If I never have to monetize what I'm doing online, what does that mean? It means I've been incredibly successful with my career, with the other stuff that I'm doing that allows me to do that. That I didn't have to monetize it. I think there's an important distinction there. So many people are only willing to start building a personal brand, are only willing to start providing this type of disproportionate value through their content online if there's a direct relationship. Okay, I, I spend a couple hours less doing my work. Well, that hour that I'm spending over here, those two hours I'm spending over here, I, get, I gotta get paid for that, right? Like, I'm, I'm taking time away from this. But what I've realized is that the truly successful people in life, they balance things by addition, not subtraction. And so all of this stuff with building my personal brand and, and doing 3,100 posts on social media, that's just an addition to the other stuff. And it's true. Think about those people that have just added value to your life and have never asked anything from you. You probably hold those people in the highest regard. They're probably people like your parents, people like that. That's just the way I want to be perceived from the people that I associate with. This one's so important, especially right now. Authenticity. I got a Facebook message the other day, it was a couple months ago. And so, <laughs> the guy said, how can I be more authentic? And at first I was like, that is the dumbest, 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 dumbest question that I have ever heard, ever heard. And I've said that before in a speech and I just stopped it there and I kind of felt bad. But I started really thinking about it, but it's actually a really good question and it's a tough question. Being authentic is not easy. It's not easy. And so you have to be calculated in how you do so. But you have to be authentic. It allows your audience to trust you, to engage with you and to tell their friends about you. If we went around the room, I think everybody, if we said, hey, what's the key to this? What's the key to that? There'd be so many people. Like, we, we all scream from the rooftops, we need more transparency. You know, what's wrong with Instagram? We need more transparency. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with that? We need more transparency. And everybody wants to talk about needing more transparency until it comes, comes time for you to be transparent, right? Because transparency isn't, isn't easy, but it's necessary for sustainability. You can only fake it for so long. You can only show your highlight reel 
for so long. You can only put on this fake facade for so long. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting. You have to be a real human being and just show people who you really are. And that's what will resonate with everyone. These are two thumbnails from the daily vlog. The first one is actually from the day that I met Cena and Matt and this whole crew. I mean, look at this. I got my Yeezys on. I'm in front of a Ferrari. Yeah, coolest dude ever, right? Yeah, whatever. And then I got this one, which is episode 100 that we just did. It says alcoholic. Which of these two vlogs do you think made the biggest impact? Yeah. So, yeah, I just almost got emotional just thinking about it. So, I put this episode out last week. Was it last week, TJ? Yeah, that was last week. Last week. And I've probably gotten 75 messages. And it was about me struggling with alcohol that I had for a long time, maybe forever. And I got messages from people that were just life-changing. It's because I was finally transparent about something. Because when you're transparent, you give people the permission to be transparent as well. You give people the permission to talk about their stuff. Because we've all got stuff. Just because I had a problem with alcohol doesn't mean that I can't stand up here and talk to you guys. It's not who I was. It's just something that I was dealing with. It's just something that I did. I had a message a guy sent me. He said, I've been struggling with alcoholism for 17 years. And after watching this video tonight, I just had a conversation with my wife about it for the first time. Like, that's, that's real. Like, that's how you build a real personal brand. The other one, the videos were like, hey, cool, did you rent that Ferrari? Like, like that's, that was like most of the comments, most of the messages. But transparency is, and authenticity is everything. It's exhausting trying to play this game of looking good and, and trying to just front, just fronting all the time, all the time, all the time. And so we've made a commitment now. Like we're, we're going to start talking about some real stuff on our vlog. And it's the stuff that really matters, the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Uh, and that's the stuff that really, really can make an impact. Next is get active. 90% of the people that are participating with social media are just lurkers. They're just scrolling through every day. They're just looking at stuff here and there. They may like something. They may share something that they, that they see that they enjoy. 9% intermittent contributors. But 1% are the heavy contributors. And so what does that mean? Well, for me, it means the strength of your brand isn't necessarily the number of followers you have but the sum of all of your activities online. Social media is noisy. Meaningful actions can cut through that clutter. What do I mean by meaningful actions? I mean like starting a podcast. I mean putting out consistent content every single day. I mean engaging with the comments, not just on your own posts, but on other people's posts. Like creating dialogue with people. That's stuff that's meaningful action. Again, you look at all this stuff, it has nothing to do with me being special, about me having any particular skills, talents, abilities, because I promise you I don't. I just do a lot of stuff. <laughs> and that stuff, compounded over time, puts you in that top 1%. Not because you're the coolest, not because you're the best looking, not because of anything other than the fact that you are active. Lastly, and guys, this is so important, just tell your story. It's your autobiography. And the whole disrupt versus being disrupted, tell your story or have your story told for you. And man, I don't want other people to tell my story. I want to tell my story because it's my story. I want to be the one that disrupts. I don't want to be the one that's disrupted. Some great, great quotes here. Great stories happen to those who tell them. That's an awesome quote. Equally as awesome as this one. The woods would be very silent if no birds sang there except those that sang the best. Again, getting back to the fact that, like, who am I? Like, you don't have to be anybody special. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to 
you know, drive sports cars and jump out of airplanes and do like crazy stuff all day and be hilarious and be great looking and, and all this stuff. Like just, just telling your story and knowing that it'll resonate with someone, but doing it for you, not for them. And tell the truth. Effective storytelling represents change. I think this is extremely important as you do start to be tr more transparent and start actually telling the truth about your life. Is when you tell your story, don't be afraid to go all the way back. Don't be afraid to go back to the depressed, dark, broke, terrible place. Because the bigger the gap between A and B, where you were and where you are today, the greater the story. The bigger the gap between who you were and who you are now, the greatest representation of change that you can tell. So don't be afraid to go start from the bottom and just tell the world how you got here. That's literally all I've done. It's all I've done. I just, I just go out, just document every day, just telling people what I do. Again, I sell life insurance. Like there's nothing exciting about that. A little tip and kind of side note here that I'll mention you can use social media as an accountability tool. That's, that's what I did. I used it as an accountability tool. On Sunday night, Monday morning, I would typically, I, I travel a lot. I spent 238 nights in a hotel last year, about the same the year before that, the year before that. And I would get on there and I'd say, hey, my goal is to sell 75 life insurance policies this week. I'm gonna be down in Georgia for four days. Now I would do this on Facebook Live, did over 400 Facebook Lives last year. And I would get on there the, the first day and I would kind of recap what was going on after every meeting. And I'd recap at the end of the day and I'd say, hey, end of day one, the goal is to sell 75 policies in four days. I sold 19 today, so I'm a little bit behind. Day two, here's where I'm at. Sold 35 policies today, so right back on schedule. Day three, 10 policies, had a terrible day today. Day four, by day four, I literally have people messaging me saying like, hey man, I know you're going into your last day. I think you got like 12 policies you gotta sell to reach that goal, like we're rooting for you. I'm like, what the heck? When you talk about the law of attraction, like people talk about the law of attraction, like all of a sudden now, there's gonna be uh, you know, smoke come up from, from the stage and we're gonna get some laser lights and get weird. But the law of attraction is the fact that I talked about 75 policies all week long, and lo and behold, at the end of the week, 75 policies. Last thing I'll mention before I'm done here is puddle love. And that's a phrase that this guy did a podcast with a few months ago named Tim in Greenville. Uh, said, do you guys realize that you can drown in three inches of water? You can drown in three inches of water. And the reality is, with all of our content, and as we start building our personal brand, as we start putting ourselves out on social media, that is where most people live. They live in that three inches of water. I've just made a commitment and I want everybody here to make a commitment to go deeper than that. To go deeper in every conversation that, we, that you have with other people. To go deeper with every post that you put online. To go deeper in the engagement when, you, when someone comments and you look at it and you're like, I don't have time to comment to that. Who the heck are you? You have time. You have plenty of time. You're just lazy. I'm <laughs> sorry. But go deep. You gotta get all A's. You already are building a personal brand. So are you gonna be the one that disrupts or are you gonna be the one that's disruptive? Add value, authenticity and transparency. Get active and write your autobiography. Thank you. You guys give it up for Tyler Harris. What's up guys, if you have not yet done so, please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down, and when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we wanna have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first, and we'll see you next time.